Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9 GP, and welcome to another episode of my Out of the Park Baseball 19 uh, GM Challenge with the Reds. We are about to start the draft, so we're into June of the 2019 season, and I thought I would this episode we'll, we'll look at how we've done so far, and then I'll go through the first part of the draft, maybe the first five, maybe ten picks if, if it moves pretty quick. Uh, I haven't really done a draft episode in a while and I've had a few people question my strategies when it comes to drafting so I figured I might look at that once again uh, but the big story right now two months into the season is how good we're playing and it's uh, I'm more shocked this year than I am last year a lot of things though are falling into place I hope they continue but just an awesome start and if you can see it if your screen's not too small we are currently leading in the National League Central by a big margin seven and a half games over Milwaukee eight eight and a half over St. Louis and Chicago our record is 35 and 19 we're playing almost 650 uh, baseball right now it's just incredible the start we've had two great months in a row and it's uh, been a pretty even mix although it's still that offense that's carrying the team we'll look at the statistics and team statistics here before we get to the draft one thing I wanted to point out uh, I've talked about this before about how out of the park baseball with some of the features they've added over the years you get that kind of role-playing feel to the game um, and one of the things that I look for and that kind of plays that way for me is my reputation and don't know how it's measured or how it's judged, you know, how you how you move up the ladder. But I started out, I guess, poor, and already my reputation's up to good. So um, one goal that I would like to end the playthrough with is, or at least however long I keep this playthrough going, I would like to get up there to Legendary, which uh, I believe is the highest rating that you can go. In my Phillies playthrough, I played a lot of seasons, and, and because I've had a pretty decent playoff run the last five years or so, my reputation's up to outstanding in that one. So I've got a long way to go. I, I, I forget the different levels, but I think it's cool that I've already moved up a notch. Uh, but before we look too far into the individual team um, statistics, let's just go ahead and take a look at how things are going in the league. You see us for sure. Have, we've got the best record in the Central, but the Braves have the best record overall in the National League at uh, they're one loss better than we are they're 35 and 18 we're 35 and 19 um, the Mets though with that big signing of Kershaw and a few other signings they had in the offseason they're starting to make a move they've won five in a row and they're just a game below 500 uh, unless they have a lot of injuries to battle I think they're gonna probably start competing for for the playoffs whether it be the the uh, division or the wild card before the year's over and then the Dodgers have some pretty tough competition right now between the Rockies and the Giants so that's not going to be a walk away in that division and then in the east of the American League <clears throat> it's still Boston and New York although Boston's gained a couple games on New York uh, the central is really tight between Cleveland Minnesota and Chicago now. Kansas City has is, is stumbled big time. They've lost six in a row right now. And then Astros, uh, they have not quite the best record in the uh, American League because the Yankees and Red Sox are just playing so good. But they're up there uh, kind of with us, with Cincinnati and the Braves, 37-19. and 19. They've won seven in a row, and uh, they've gained some ground on Texas and Oakland who's struggling a little bit more than I thought they would be and I noticed they've already got Chris Davis uh, who's primarily their DH they've already got him on the trading block in terms of individual performances and you can see he's leading the league in home runs right now so um, they might be doubting their chances going down the stretch uh, I don't know if there's anything major that I was going to point out individually. Uh, Gregorius is having a good start for for the Yankees, though. Um, but I wanted to 
in the National League, something that's really happened, and I'll just go ahead and move to the individual performances here. Uh, first off, the team performances, we were really balanced those first two months, 14-9, then 18-9 in May. But the offense, you can see, we are top two in most every category, top two or three. The only category we're not in the top three or four is in home runs, and we're seventh there. Pitching, after starting out really strong, uh, we've hit a slide. Starters ERA and bullpen ERA have gone down quite a bit, so we're in eighth, ninth in a few categories. Still second in defensive efficiency, which is cool, but the pitching staff has been really – much improved, I think. You throw out like a Gesellman who struggled. Hamels is starting to pitch better, so uh, he had that big injury. And since he's come off that injury, he's looking a little bit better. But we've got some guys who are settling in in that starting rotation, and they're doing really good. Namely, Michael Waka, who was the pitcher of the National League for May. Um, he won his first eight starts of the year, and he's hit a rough stretch right now, so I'm hoping that he gets uh, back to form, but he's still eight wins leading the National League. And then one guy I'm really happy with his development, I hope he keeps it up, is Tyler Molly. He's now a three-star pitcher. Um, still has some room to go with movement. He's going to give up a lot of home runs, but his ERA is good. He's up to seven wins right now on pace for 20-plus. He's on pace for, he's been on pace for 200 or more strikeouts at times in this, uh, so far this season. But that's good news. Castillo has been uh, up and down, but he's still looking okay in the rotation. So if Hamels keeps uh, keeps playing a little bit better, and then Gesellman, I might have to, uh, when Lynn comes off the DL, I'll probably move Gesellman to the bullpen. Well, I'm assuming Girardi will move him to the bullpen, but we'll see. Uh, but the bullpen has been a little spotty at the in places, Iglesias not having a great year. Lorenzen was started out really hot in May or April, but he's uh, ca calmed down quite a bit. And uh, Peralta was the lefty specialist primarily I was using in the pen, and man, he just he was looking terrible. So I sent him down to AAA and called it Finnegan, and I'm hoping that he will, um, even though he's got some movement issues, he's got some solid pitches, and I'm hoping that maybe that'll help us out in the bullpen. But the lineups, the biggest thing here offensively is Shedrick Long, who was the rookie that I moved up from double A and uh, just to take a look at in spring training. And Girardi was starting him over um, Scooter Jeanette pretty much, I'd say 70, 80% of the time. So I made the move to trade Jeanette. I wish I'd gotten a little bit more from uh, for Jeanette, I, I got Gesellman for him, but so far Long has been definitely the the right move at the right time. He, uh, my scout has him at a potential four star. There's a little bit of discrepancy between him and OSA, but I'm I'm thinking that he's playing up to my scout's uh, potential ratings for him for sure. He was the rookie of the month. In May, he had just a solid month, and you can see his overall numbers. What he's on pace for, over 100 runs, 183 hits. He's hitting 347. He's uh, showing some power. He's uh, on pace for 30-plus home runs, 120-plus RBIs. Uh, that would be a solid, unbelievable rookie year if he continues to do that. I think he'll probably have some... Um, I think he'll probably have some stumbles here and there, but, man, what a great start. Also, Winker, not a lot of power from him when he hit 22 home runs last year, but he's having another great year. He had a five-hit game earlier in the season. And then um, the rest of that offense, Senzel, has been up and down, but uh, solid overall. I mean, he's he's picking up where he left off from last year. And one big note, uh, it looks like Hamilton has lost his – leadoff spot in the lineup, but uh, he's been playing a little bit better lately too, so I'm hoping that he, he comes back. And then Shebler, the average is down. You're not going to get that much an average from him anyway, but he's on pace for some really monster productive numbers. On pace for 40-plus home runs, 150-plus RBIs. I hope he stay, stays healthy because he was injured last year down the stretch. 
Uh, and then the rest of the team, Joey Votto, his power's not there, but he's having another solid Joey Votto year on pace for 174 walks, which is would be a, um, a record for him, and that's saying a lot. Uh, but offensively, we've just been really solid up and down the line, so I hope we keep that up. Um, I think that was all I wanted to look at individually before we go ahead and start the draft. Um, the big thing about the draft for us this year, of course, coming off that playoff year, we're, we're picking low. Uh, we didn't lose any first-round picks. We didn't make any big free agent signings, but we don't have a pick until the 19th. And going in, my strategy um, has always been I am going to pick the best available. I don't pick by need because I think, you know, the development time is so long for most of these guys. Unless you're picking somebody in those top five sometimes top 10, top 10 picks, you're not going to get anybody who's, who's ready to start, you know, in a year or so. So um, I'm, I'm going to be looking for the best player available. And I typically go and look at starting pitchers first because, um, as always, they are such a premium in this, in this uh, playthrough. And I can already see it's probably going to be a bad year for starting pitchers because this is the, this is all players. Well, no, I'm sorry. I did it. I did it again. Uh, this is all players and the top, I'd say what, whatever the filter allows, maybe 15 or so um, players in the draft based on my scouts potential ratings. And you can see there's three pitchers in that whole list. And if they're, that good odds are by the time I get to that 19th pick they're going to be gone but we're going to go ahead and, and um, we moved up to my pick and I am seeing one starting pitcher out there two Cooper Benson who's a lefty uh, he's a very easy pick for us he would be easy to sign but He's a potential three and a half stars from my scout. OSA is a potential two and a half. Uh, potential three solid pitchers, pitches with that changeup being the best. It's got some room to grow, obviously. Let me see what my scout says. He's uh, pro project projected to fit into the middle of a big league rotation. So that's that's uh, Benson Bitten now is a three star from my scout and three star from OSA. But you know, I really he's also very easy to sign. But in all honesty, I like OSA's or, or even my scout in some ways. I like that control rating stands out. He's got three solid potential pitches as well. And it looks like he's a, he's a right-handed pitcher, and he can probably make it to the middle of a rotation. And then last one, Drake Fellows. Uh, he's going to be a hard sign. Looks like he's got some pretty good personality ratings. And he's going to be a potential three-and-a-half star player based on OSA. He's got four pitches. So if I were to draft... Uh, if I were to draft any of these, honestly, I would go with this guy because I feel like those four pitches, even though the changeup is not as strong, he may even develop that, give him time in the, in the minors. But my fear is if, if I don't draft a pitcher in this first round, as long as there are, and, and those guys are pretty decent. They're serviceable. I would be happy drafting either one of them. If I don't draft a pitcher in this first round, these guys will probably be gone in my next pick. So let me look at batting potential then. Uh, this is a four-star center fielder, great defensive ratings, but I don't like him as well. And then a shortstop here, he's impossible to sign. And then a catcher, three-and-a-half star, good defensive catcher already but I don't like his potential contact and then a good-looking right fielder here um, he's an extremely hard sign but 
got good defensive ratings. He's a high school player. Potential three and a half for my scout. Potential two and a half from OSA. But both of us like his contact potential. Uh, some really good numbers overall. But I think I am going to go with Drake Fellows. Um, first pick. He's an extremely hard sign, but... Uh, I want to get that pitcher first this year. Even though, like I say, I'm not drafting for need. I mean, this is, um, he's still got a long way to go before he develops, but I'm going to, um, I'm just going to try to get some pitching depth in, in my system this year. Now, next round, my next pick, second round, uh, we've got a couple pitchers here. Tyler Baum, who is a bullpen right now. He's going to be a future starter. He's got three pitches. I feel like he could make it as a starter based on those potential ratings. OSA likes him a little bit better. Good personality class. My scout, He's just. they say he's just got a two-pitch repertoire, and he's probably right. I don't know if those pitches are going to be strong enough down the line. If, if he doesn't develop them, he, I don't think he'll make it as a starter. But then we got Maddox Conger. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at him, and he's probably only going to be a bullpen pitcher. And uh, OSA doesn't like him as much. But now the guy I was looking at in right – think this was him or, or am I wrong no it's a different guy the guy I was looking in right field he he did get drafted um, so I like guys who you know I'm looking primarily the ratings that I'm looking at it's contact first uh, then uh, I'll, I'll look at maybe gap potential before I look at power I look at eye uh, strikeouts potential I try to get somebody who's going to be double digits in all of those, but um, I'm really looking at high contact, high speed, good de defense in, uh, when I'm making my drafts. Th those are the kind of teams that I like to develop, and if they've got any, uh, my, um, my feeling on it, my experience playing this game for so many years when it comes to the draft, if they've got contact, especially contact and gap contact, gap, gap contact, um, their power can develop as long as it's not like one or zero or two or whatever, as long as it's not so so low that it's obvious that they're just uh, single spray hitter type type batters. If they've got any uh, potential for contact and gap contact, a lot of times they'll develop some power uh, as they come up through the system and then once they get into the majors. So for me, I'm primarily going with contact, defense, well, contact, speed, and defense. So looking at that list, um, this guy kind of stands out to me, Hunter Bishop and also Dan Barter, a couple of two-and-a-half star potential um, center fielders. Um, his personality class is not as good, this Dan Barter, but, man, he is double digits potential in every rating for my scout and uh, OSA doesn't like him as much though so I'd have to trust my scout on this one and then the other um, Hunter Bishop also potential um, potential double digits in contact and power got great speed he can play right fielder really well and his uh, ratings there personality wise are good he's a two star potential with OSA but OSA also likes his potential ratings so I think he's a good pick. And then Tyler Malone, uh, pretty good defensive infielder, good personality ratings, but OSA doesn't really like him as much. Another good shortstop here with uh, good defensive player, good speed, solid speed. Uh, OSA doesn't like him as much. So I kind of like, I kind of like this Hunter Bishop pick. And uh, I'm going to go with him next. Now, what did I say he was speed-wise? He has great speed. So 
him one more time. I think, yeah, he has he has good popularity ratings. So I'm going to draft this guy with my second pick. And now we're in the third round. Um, still some three-star potentials up here. And we got the Maddox Conger, who uh, nobody's really picked up yet. He's, he's primarily, I think, going to be bullpen, even though he's listed as a starter. So now Dan Barter is still out there. Um, I do like to what my scout says about him. And let me see if it's... Uh, He's got some raw potential, but he's just 19. Let me see if there's anything else here that would stand out. Now, Todd Malone, who I looked at earlier, I just don't like um, the way OSA has his ratings, potentially. And that Odom, potential four-star, but he's impossible. Yeah, he was one I looked at earlier. And here's a good-looking first baseman. Um might be somebody to look at. He's 18 years old. He's got great, he's a leader. And um, my scout likes him a whole lot better than OSA. So let me see if I can find somebody better. I don't, I don't like to see, at the end of the day, if I've got a decent scout, I'm going to go with my scout's opinions. But I really, um, I really like to have a balance between those two. Man, see, like this uh, Emmanuel Dean, for instance. Looking at the over individual ratings, my scout has this guy with some great potential, uh, except for gap power, but potential 12 contact, 14 power, 14 discipline. And this is on a 20 scale, so that's well above average. But then you look at OSA, and they've got the guy with a potential 3 contact. Um, they like his gap power and power numbers, but... You'd have to really hope that he's somewhere closer to what my scout says because that's a big gap. So I, I don't really want to take a risk with an early round pick like that. Uh, so we looked at Carter. Here's another first baseman, Tristan English. Double digit potential in every rating. And. Uh, once again, OSA doesn't like his contact as much, but um, they do like everything else from this guy. So I think this guy will be my third pick. He's extremely hard to sign, but we'll see. It's um, Hopefully that won't be too bad of a, a move. So we've still got some guys showing up here that have been in there for a while. Um, Maddox Conger, for instance. Here's a second baseman. He's got some good speed. Pretty decent defense considering OSA likes him a, a good bit. I like the potential there because uh, he's not going to be a very, you know, he's not going to be a power hitter, but he, he probably will develop. Like I said, if his contact and everything else develops, he'll probably develop into that. Let me see what the scout says. Um, he's an above average defensive infielder and uh Although it's long the way he's playing, I won't need anybody at second for a while, hopefully. And then here's a center fielder. Can play a lot of positions. Uh, not necessarily a great personality, but uh, nothing that'll kill you. Good defender, though. Good speed. But man, I would really have to trust my scout on this one. There's so many deliberations to make when it comes to the drafts. I'm almost, uh, I'm almost going back to to barter here at center because you know my, and just trust my scout a little bit here, but um, because I love those potential ratings so much, and it's got a lot of raw potential, but you know that's what the draft is. It's about raw potential, so I'm going to go with him as my third pick and now go into the fourth round uh, I'm not seeing many pitchers show up here here's another one down a potential two-star pitcher for my scout anyway 
uh, bullpen and emergency starter. Three pitches that are pretty solid. So OSA likes them okay. Um, And then here's another one I just uh, I didn't notice before. Justin Hooper. How did I miss him? Oh, okay, this was OSA's rating. Uh, my scout doesn't like him as much. So if I look for what starting pitchers are available right now, Max Conger is still the best starter out there available according to my scout. But one of the things that I also, when it comes to pitchers, I'm looking double digit potential in all three of these major ratings, movement control stuff. Um, and of course, when it comes to pitching, starting pitching, you also want somebody who's going to develop three, hopefully four pitches to, if you if you want to make them into a starter. Um, it's Riley Cornelio. He's got, he's got a pretty good average there, 13, 10, and 9 in terms of his max. But I think I, I, might, I might regret this, but I think I'm going to trust my scout and hope this guy develops better than, um, you know, he's got good personality ratings. I'm hoping that he'll develop a little bit better. He's got him as a 4 and 5 star, a 4th or 5th starter. Um, that wouldn't be too bad for a 4th round pick, I don't think. And now we're going to look and see um, in this fifth pick. I don't see any starter starting pitchers here that are blowing me away. Let me look at relievers to see if there's maybe a closer. No, relievers must have gone early this year. There's not many, uh, many out there. Same with closers. So all batters, again, Still some uh, potential three and two and a half star guys out here, so I think that I should stick here for this pick. And so Matheny, I don't know that I've looked at him before. He's impossible to sign. Don't want that right now. But these two guys at the bottom, Josh Sabalios, I guess you'd say. He's a left, left-handed left hitter. He's got some um, good-looking potential. Defense, not that great, but he's 17. Uh, he has great speed. It's kind of pitcher, kind of player I'm looking for a lot of times, but OSA doesn't like him at all. And then Josh Warner uh, can play several positions. He's young, so hopefully his defense will get better. Let me see what OSA. I think I'm going to take a gamble on this guy too because his potential ratings from my scout, if they hold true, are really good. The only thing would be his eye and discipline, but great speed. He can play several positions, so he should be able to find a spot. If his if his bat's good, he should be able to find some place in the minors where he can develop, um, especially if it's in the infield because he's got good defensive ratings in the infield. Uh, good personality class for the most part. Hopefully that won't get better, worse, but um, I don't think I've drafted an infielder short of a first baseman so far, but I kind of like his numbers overall. There's no science to this. I mean, if you if you play this game a lot, you know, it's, it's mostly gut feel when it comes to the draft. I mean, you're looking at just trying to interpret these spreadsheets for the most part, and um, it's tough. A lot of times it is just a gut feeling, but... I've said this before with with out of the park baseball they do such a great job I think of presenting the information to you so whether the decision you make turns out to be a good one or the right one for long term or not you know you've got a lot of things you can look at and you could just you could just focus on the potential ratings you could focus on just your scout scouting report you could take one category and say hey, I'm I'm just going to go all speed in this draft and as long as, you know, you can filter it really easy, and as long as um, the rest of the 
potential ratings for contact and gap contact, I, Ks aren't that bad, you know, you might develop a pretty good minor league system just drafting based on speed. Same with power. You, you know, you could just, uh, I don't trust power as much as I trust speed, to be honest, but because to me, speed usually, um, speed usually, in my experience anyway, in this game, means that they're going to be good defenders too, especially if it's in the outfield or in those middle infield positions. But you could, if you wanted to, just go based on power. Um, here's a guy, C.J. Nice at shortstop, potential 14 power with good eye and, and good K potential. Um, Xavier Carter, who, who we looked at, and my scout thinks a whole lot of, of this guy. And I may draft him here, to be honest, just uh, to take a gamble because if he developed to, to this level, uh, at the very worst, this would be a guy that I could trade. So we're down in that. We're down to the point now within a six pick. We're not going to have to um, pay any bonus signing money, so it, it's not as risky for these picks as well. That's why, too, Josh Chavalos, um I may go with him too at this point because it, my scout is so high on this guy. But um, I'm up to seven picks. I thought I might get through ten, but I'm going to slow it down a little bit and take a look. I'll probably, now that I've gone through and got what I think is probably the best potential overall, uh, now I might start looking at filling out the system a little bit, meaning that I'll bounce back and forth. I might look at catchers, see who the best catcher is. I might look at uh, relievers like I did earlier to see who the best relievers are are. Uh, available out there and and it's going to be like I did um, or this is starting pitchers but like I did earlier I'm looking at these three r main ratings for the pitchers I'm hoping that they've got potential to reach double digits and hopefully uh, not in the yellow when it gets up into the green that's when they're above average um, potential and then when you get to the blue that's when they're what I would consider all-star potential so if, if all three of those ratings are green potential, you've got a good shot at, at um, a good pitcher if, if he develops up to that potential. But um, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this Cincinnati Reds playthrough. It's been a, a real shocker, i, I got to be honest. Uh, I don't know what the secret has been, but things are falling into place. We're going to have some money to play with this offseason, so regardless of what happens this year, as long as there's some good players available next year, um, we might make a good solid run at the World Series sooner than I thought. But uh, it's early this year, so we'll just have to cross our fingers and, and not get too cocky because that's a start that's going to be hard to maintain, 35-19. and 19. But uh, so far, so good. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode.